Hi guys, this video borrows heavily from an old Canadian Air Force training video, part of an Antenna Fundamentals series, and this one's called Antenna Directivity. I loved the visualisation, but the film is old and hard to watch, so I've reprogrammed it in Xcode, running on iOS Simulator, and screen captured to produce this video. Throughout this video, a radiated radio wave is represented as this sinusoidal waveform. In order to draw attention to the peaks of the waveform, the area surrounding the positive peaks of the wave are coloured red and the negative peaks blue. The area surrounding the wave's zero crossings are now removed. The reason for this will become evident in the top-down view. This is a simple vertical half-wave dipole. Viewed from above, we can look at it as a point source like this. A vertical dipole antenna has an omnidirectional radiation pattern. We can visualise this radiation pattern as a series of expanding circles. Oftentimes, it's desirable to concentrate this radiation pattern in a particular direction. That is to say, we wish to make the antenna directive. Without any kind of scale in this visualisation, it's impossible to tell what the wavelength is. But what is important is that a half a wavelength can be determined. The distance between any two neighbouring opposite polarity peaks is one half of a wavelength. Let's introduce a second dipole positioned exactly one half wavelength away from the first. If we flip the second dipole vertically so that it's fed 180 degrees out of phase from the first, we find that the antenna becomes directional along the plane of the array. Waves propagating on the west and east side of the antenna align in phase and are concentrated in those directions. Waves propagating in the north and south directions overlap each other out of phase and cancel each other out. Now let's see what happens if we flip the second vertical dipole vertically so that they are both fed in phase with each other. Now we can see that radio waves propagating on the east and west side plane of the array overlap 180 degrees out of phase and cancel each other out. And this time waves propagating on the north and south directions overlap each other in phase and concentrate. Now let's add two more vertical dipoles with every odd dipole flipped vertically so that they are fed out of phase and we can see that we've concentrated the propagation in two directions even further. Waves radiated from every antenna overlap each other in phase along the plane of the array and again feeding all antenna elements in phase results in bidirectivity in the north-south directions. We can add more dipole elements to concentrate waves in two directions even further. There are several practical implementations of this principle in use today. One of them is very well known and it's called the Collinear Array. This antenna has the attribute of bidirectivity, but we may wish to make an antenna unidirectional. Let's begin with our first vertical dipole and add a reflector a quarter of a wavelength from the dipole. A wave leaving the dipole reaches the reflector a quarter of a wavelength later and due to inductance a wave of opposite polarity is produced. When the reflected wave reaches the antenna a quarter of a wavelength later, the reflected wave is in phase with the radio wave being produced by the antenna. Notice that behind the antenna, in the west direction, the waves overlap out of phase and cancel each other out. In the forward direction, or east side of this screen, the waves overlap each other in phase and reinforce each other. Thus, this particular array is unidirective. Our radiation pattern has been concentrated into a single lobe. And this principle can be applied to the antenna arrays shown in the previous video segment. 
a reflector can be used to make them unidirectional. These principles don't just apply to transmitting antennas, also called radiators. A receive antenna will also be more receptive in the direction of its radiation pattern.